Welcome to Marine Detail Supply Company, setting the standard for the marine detailing industry. We set the standard. Hey, Ken with Stark Yacht Care here, and I tell you what, we have something in store for all of you out there. We are here in Sarasota, Florida with the one and only Cole Holbrook from Holbrook Holes, where he's going to show us how to attack this 80-foot Marlowe. This is a paint surface, right? Not yeah. gel coat? Yeah, it's all painted. It's all painted, and we're kind of working with a budget. So we want to show you how, you know, if you have a budget, how you can achieve that great surface with that. Why don't you show us through it? Let's get it done. Let's get going. All right. All right, Cole. So we're here on the Marlowe. We're actually working on paint. Is that correct? Because this is not gel coat. Paint. Yep. It is paint. You know, we have some oxidation that we can see that's going on, especially like right up in this area. Unlimited budget. You're still in the situation of eight-year-old paint. Eight-year-old right. paint that's been heavy cut, probably even sanded at some point in time and who knows how many times. You can only go so far without cutting it too close. First step, the heavy oxidation. We're gonna remove that, the heavy water spotting. So level R. Um, with paint, you can go restructure with, um, but with this being so extremely oxidized, we're gonna go level R. You can still get an awesome finish and elevate finishes it out great. So after the level R, we're gonna go in with elevate with, um, the Rupes 21 millimeter and a yellow Rupes wool polishing pad. Yeah, I've and been real happy with that yeah, too. Me too. It's new to me. For the past six, seven months, I've been using them. Um, but you know, detailing grows, things change. So like, I love trying the new products. The level R on here, pretty good because we're working on a pretty good sized section. So I want to make sure you guys see the level R. You want it wet, you want it thick. Get a nice section going. Put it on one. We're just gonna dab it around for a second. We're gonna start it up on one. Nice and slow, low speed. Get your good deep cut through. And all of those lines are going left to right because the pipes that were sitting in this location were blocking the sun from hitting those areas. So I'm gonna dig really hard on my left to right, hoping to pass those up nicely. I'm gonna stay up here so you guys can see. Still on one, still digging really hard. I'm probably at a seven on the pressure meter. Um, it is paint, so you've got to be mindful of that at the same time. So that was about two solid passes, and I'm going to bump it up to two almost. Slow my, slow my movement down, but let the spin kind of take control here. And on the pressure level, I kind of went down to a five. I'm really just controlling the machine, letting the pad do the work, the product do the work. And you can already see a pretty wicked gloss. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit higher here. Still, still right at two. And I notice you're really keeping the pad pretty, pretty flat. Flat is so important, especially with paint, especially cutting. You know, I've seen a lot of people talk about digging it like this and really putting the angle down. And with paint, it's not something you're gonna wanna do. You're just gonna do more harm than good. Um, if you're working on a really bad level R and you're still digging like that, uh, if you sand it and things like that, it's, it's understandable. But if you end up doing a first cut and you're kind of holding your pad sideways, you want to make sure that you're finishing it out super flat. You so your last pass needs to be flat. It has to be flat. And well, not even your last pass. It really needs to be two, at least two more passes, keeping it flat, keeping it spinning fast, uh, allowing it to do its job. We're going to make a snow flare, but I don't want to do it at your camera. It's all right. Cleaning your pad is essential. They get a little wet and it makes it more difficult to clean. Rupa's brush gets it out really nice. I do a fast one on three and then I come down to one and I'll kind of re-fluff it for you. Picks those fibers back up so you're getting a nice smooth. I so do it every section. section. Yeah. Every section for Every you. section because you don't want it caking up in there. I mean, already this pad has done two sections and you can see that these gnarly matted fibers here will end up actually causing scratches. So I cleaned it out. I'm just gonna kind of hit this over one more time real lightly. Um, the product's pretty dried, but it's just kind of once again, a polishing step more than anything. I'm on two. It's like right around 900 to 1000. 
Um, personally, I think it's a little higher than that. Yeah. Flex seems that their buffers seem to run so fast, but like their one uh, is not your normal 600 RPM, yeah. like a Dewalt, you can yeah. hear that difference. Yeah. So I treat them a little bit different. Like on my Dewalt, I'll start, excuse me, in like the seven to 800 range, and then I'm typically finishing out like 1600 RPM. For, yeah. so, so, so far, you know, it looks like after that first pass, they're really um, clean that, things that up. So the surface actually looks really good right now. Um, but we're just going to brighten it up with the Elevate and really open it up, get it ready for the next step, which is alcohol prepping and ceramic coating. So Elevate, we're using a Rupes wool polishing, like I said. I do three little dabs. And what machine um, is that? This is a Rupes 21 long throw. Pretty sweet machine. It rips, um, especially in this instance. So we're going to go ahead and dab into the surface just like before spread it around a good bit. And I'm gonna turn it down to one just to blend everything in one time. Get that compound spread around. And I'm gonna turn it up to about five. And we're gonna let it just do its thing. I typically do about four or five passes, um, especially since we're doing two steps. I'm gonna make sure I spend my time here. Nice and slow, consistent pace. Keep your pressure there. I'm probably on a seven, maybe a little less. quick I'm gonna clean the pad it's not that it's getting bad but you see it just gets a little bit gunky along the way mm -hmm. that can leave some lines and once again make your next step harder so we're gonna try to get it as good as we can in these two steps alone but quick pad clean and boom right back in action Passing over each section, a half a pad. Nothing that will do it. Let's wipe this clean and see what we're working with here. And if you want to see the truest result, you want to get some prep spray and wipe it down with that. Uh, but we'll be doing that when we go through with the coating, so it's not necessary right now. Yeah, that's, you know, the other thing that I really like about using Stark products themselves is they're all water-based. Yeah, absolutely. There's no fillers in it, which everyone's so, you know, used to these products with fillers. And the moment you go ahead and alcohol it, or let's say the boat gets real grimy and you dawn wash it, the truth is revealed. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. then you don't know what to do. Stark yeah. with, especially the ceramic, you know, I have so many clients that are like, well, what do I use to wash it? Of course, you want to use pure, clean, you know, uh, coating safe soaps but if you get a bad day where you're out there bloodying up the boat to the end of time yep. come back dawn wash the boat yep. come back through it after the dawn wash with some replenish and you'll be right back on track you don't want to do that every time you're washing yeah the boat. no definitely but, not you know stark is the repel pro thor they're strong products they they're much stronger than waxes that's why it's my go-to deal now i try to explain that to everybody you know what you're using the boat for and if it's a luxury thing and you're just kind of leisure cruising, you might not need ceramic. But if you're out there putting blood on the boat, yep. ceramic's a good, like it's just a no brainer for yep. those guys. You know, talk about your business real quick. Tell me why you prefer Stark products and then we'll go ahead and end the video. Oh man, well, I'm Cole Holbrook. I own Holbrook Holes Professional Marine Detailing. I've been detailing now for probably eight or nine years. Started as a hobby, ended up being something I fell in love with and I just noticed what was going on in the marine industry and these other detailers, they were so stuck on this 3M, three-step process that I just never bought it. I never saw real results from it. And Check out uh, all the products. They'll be uh, linked down in the description below as well with uh, uh, if you're looking for a detailer too, those of out there that don't want to attempt it, Cole Holbrook is your guy yes, uh, down in uh, South Florida. So again, uh, please go ahead, like this video and subscribe and share it as it is really important. See ya. 
make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and comment on our content. We encourage engagement and debate. Be on the lookout for more product reviews, tutorials, and interviews just like this. Follow us on social media for free giveaways weekly. See you next time.